uh, here i am going to focus on few question and answer what is frequently asking in nclex board exam most of the question in this powerpoint select all that apply practice questions first question here a nurse is caring for a client with a cystic fibrosis with which members of the healthcare team is it most appropriate for her to collaborate select all the apply cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder in which the lungs and digestive system get involved and get full with a mucous membrane so you see the cystic fibrosis much secretion it is thick stick and also st sticky mucus block the airway and also pancreas same thing happened thick sticky mucus block the pancreas ticks and bile duct right so cystic fibrosis patient also present with other signs and symptoms because cystic fibrosis affect the cell that makes the mucus or sweat and digestive fluid and this fluid are thick in cystic fibrosis patients and also cause the blocking of duct throughout the body and leading to a range of symptoms. The lungs and digestive systems are main area that are affected. The symptoms may appear soon after birth or in the early childhood. So we can see, I, as I told you, this is a genetic defect and defective gene we call cystic fibrosis. TR gene, chromosome number seven. So they said, select all. Number one, they need nutritional support. They need physical therapy, social services, occupational therapy, and respiratory therapy. So correct answer, they need nutritional services, physical therapy, also respiratory therapies. In this picture, we can see normal ear alveoli, but here we can see it is full of mucus and it is dilated. So the major objectives of therapy for cystic fibrosis are promoting secretion, clearance, control the infection, and also providing adequate nutrition. The respiratory therapist would help the client clear his or her secretions. Nutritional services are vital in promoting optimal nutrition. Exercise, a component of physical therapy, is important in cleaning the airways. Social services and occupational therapy could play a role in the client cares, but are not as important as nutrition and physical therapy. So cystic fibrosis patient sometimes present with persistent cough, also so, uh, wheezing, shortness of breath, sinusitis, inability to exercise. In case if patient is a man, develop male infertility or also repeated lung infection. So it is important to know how to take care of them. So nursing intervention is important. So nursing care plan for the client with cystic fibrosis include maintaining adequate oxygenation, promoting the measure to remove pulmonary secretion, 
or also emphasizing the importance of adequate fluid and dietary intake, ensuring adequate nutrition and preventing the complications. Next question here. A uh, chance nurse com um, completing a de uh, this, uh, decreased client chart also audit note that the chart contain a copy of the client's advanced directives, right? And also do not resuscitation order. While reviewing the nurse note, the charge nurse find documentation of a code blue and uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation with a physician's entry to discontinue code blue due to the existing advanced directives and DNA from the client. What does the charge nurse conclude? Select all that apply. Number one, nurse was correct call a code blue. Physician was correct to stop resuscitation effort by calling a code blue and the nurse disregard the client advanced directives and DNA order. And she must have read the chart incorrectly and the code should have continued. So, first of all, answer this question. I want to tell what is advanced directives. So, advanced directives are a written instruction recognized under the state of law that are related to the provision of care a person wishes to have when she or he cannot make the decision by themselves. So advanced directives might be living will or duration, uh, durable power of money or healthcare proxy. Also advanced care medical directives, anyone. And also for this patient said the cardiopulmonary resuscitation, DNR. So do not resuscitate. So cardiopulmonary resuscitates is the emergency treatment for someone those heart and or breathing are stopped. So when a person heart stop or blood stop, circulation through, I mean circulation uh, blood stop, stop the circulation throughout the body. If a person stop the breathing, the blood cannot get oxygen. So CPR or other emergency care, we need to restart the circulations. So cardiopulmonary resuscitation a life-saving emergency procedure that involved breathing for the victim and applying the external chest compression to make the heart pump, shortly called CPR. But if any patient write they do not want, so definitely we supposed to follow them, right? So what Next. So answer said the physician was correct to stop the resuscitation effort number three by calling a code blue and the nurse disregarded the client advanced directives and DNR order. Rational said by initiating a code blue, the nurse did not follow the client advanced directives and DNR order. The physician was correct to the follow the client wishes and stop the resuscitation effort. The physician had 
authority to stop the fall. What next? Next question here, a nurse is assessing the level of consciousness, shortly called LOC, of a client who suffered the head injuries, right? Uh, she used the Glasgow Soma scale and determined that the client's score is 15. Which response did the nurse assess in this client? Select all that apply. Number one, spontaneous eye opening, trachea, bradycardia, hypotension. Number three, are the 12 people size? Number four, orientations to persons, place, and time. Number five, motor response to pain localized and in comprehensible sound. The correct answer said spontaneous eyes opening. Number four, orientation to the person, place, and time. So Glasgow Oscoma scale, or we need to use the level of consciousness by testing and scoring the three observations. Eye opening, motor response, and verbal stimuli response. The client are scored on their best responses and this score are dulled. The high score is 15, the highest response in these three categories are spontaneous eye opening, obeying motor commands and orientations time, place and persons. Vital signs are not assessed as part of the Glasgow Scoma scale, Changes in vital sign and unequal pupil size occur with increase the intracranial pressure, but are not the part of Glasgow Schumer scale. So incomprehensive verbal response is a score of two of the Glasgow Schumer scale, and therefore could not contribute to the score of 15. So here we can see, Glasgow Scoma Scale. Glasgow Scoma Scale was developed to continue or to combine the findings of the three component, right? Three component, I'd say. So one, eye opening, verbal response, and motor response. So here we see how to calculate the Glasgow Scoma scale. So step one, calculate opening eyes and patient get a score. So if your patient open the eyes spontaneously, they're supposed to get four. So I open verbal stimuli or I open to painful stimuli, right? So if patient spontaneously open four to verbal stimuli three, if it is painful open, patient supposed to get two. If it is not open, they're supposed to get one, no and calculate the verbal response yeah so if verbal i mean oriented your patient they will get five right if patient is confused they will get four if inappropriate response or what they use they will get three or in comprehensive sound 
when you up something, they say something abnormal word or sound, they will get two. Or no verbal response, one. And step three, motor response. So how to calculate it? If patient follow your order, they will get the six, obey the commands. Localized to the pain will five. If they withdraw from the pain, they will get four. Abnormal flexion three, abnormal extension two, and no response will get one. So next, um, next question here. A trauma patient, right? A trauma victims in intensive care unit has a tension pneumothorax with sign and symptoms associated with the tension pneumothorax. Select so like all that apply. Tension pneumothorax. Let me see. This is the picture. So in the first picture, we can see it is normal. And you see, this is the visceral flora, make it bigger. In between visceral and pater flora, we call floral space. So in second picture, we can see this is a normal anatomy of heart, but here showing developed pressure inside the lungs. Tension pneumothorax is a life threatening condition causes by the continuous entrance and entrapment um, of air into the plural space. So you see the air get in and thereby compression of the lungs towards the heart or blood vessels and other structures in the chest. So what are the pathophysiology? Air enter the plural space, tension pneumothorax are cannot leave. Pressure on the lungs, pressure on the trachea, heart and others, sounding structure inside the lungs. If patient have it, they present with symptom, shortness of breath, acute chest pain, decrease the blood pressure, decrease blood oxygen level, increase the heart rate. What are the cause? We categorized the cause spontaneous or simple and trauma traumatic. Primary without underlying lung disease. Secondary cause with underlying lung disease. Also trauma like accident from any kind of trauma including complications from medical procedure. So can patient, if patient has an underlying cause can develop into tension pneumothorax, which is the most common seen after traumatic chest injuries or those using mechanical ventilations. So next questions, uh, okay, the correct answer is, here, decrease the cardiac output. Number two, hypotension. Number three, tra tracheal deviations to the opposite side. So as, as I told you, it is medical emergencies. They are forced through in one web valve through the lungs tissue into the world space, you see? Like this picture, push the pressure. Lung is go opposite direction. Trachea is deviated. And right, also mediastinum is shifted. And treatment is needle decompressions. So you see here, treatment, needle decompressions. Rational said the tension pneumothorax result when air 
in the plural space in under the higher pressure then the air in sound i mean close by lungs the site of the rupture of the plural space act as a one way valve allowing the air to enter on inspirations but not allowing it to the escape on expirations the air presses again the media sternum and causing a shift to the opposite side and decrease the mirror's return. As the air passes again the mediastinum, compensatory trachycardia and trachypnea also occur. Decrease the cardiac output may cause distended, not the flattened or jugular veins. Next questions here. Yeah. A client with Edison disease and also is scheduled for discharge after being hospitalized for a adrenal crisis. Which statement by the client indicate that the client teaching has been effective? Select all the apply. Number one, I have to take my steroid for 10 days. I need to wait uh, every day daily to be sure I not eat too many food calories. Number three, I need to call my physician to discuss my steroid. Steroid needs before I have dental work. Number four, I will call physicians if I suddenly feel profoundly weak or dizzy. Number five, if I feel like I have the flu, I will carry on usual because there is an expected response. Number six, I need to obtain and wear a medic alert bracelet. Right, so my patient has a Edison disease. Edison disease means a long-term endocrine disorder result from insufficient amount of hormone released by adrenal glands or part of the, or sometime tumor developed. The correct answer said, number three, I need to call my physician to discuss my steroid need before I have dental work. Number four, I will call physicians if I suddenly feel profound, weak, or dizzy. Number six, I need to obtain where a medical bracelet. Rational, dental work can be caused a physical stress. Therefore, the client physicians need to be informed about the dental work and an adjusted dose of steroid. May be necessary. Fatigue, weakness, dizziness are symptoms of inadequate dosing of steroid therapy. The physician should be notified if these symptoms occur. A medic alert bracelet allows the healthcare provider to assess the client history of Edison disease. If the client is unable to communicate these information, a client with Edison disease does not produce enough steroid. So routine administration of steroid is a lifetime treatment. Daily weight should be monitored to monitor change in fluid balance, not the calorie intake. Influenza is an added physical stressor and the client may require 
and increase the dose of steroid, right? So here we see, we can see what are the common characteristics of Addison disease. So Addison disease, it is the adrenal insufficiency. Most common sign, frozen skin dis uh, discoloration. So hyperpigmentation, muscle weakness, lethargy, fatigue, dizziness, vomiting, and diarrhea, weight loss, GI disturbance. Also, blood pressure go down, sodium level go down, blood sugar level go down, temperature go down, right? Hematocrit level go down. This is the Addison disease. It just opposite of Addison, we call Cushing syndrome. Everything go up. Sometimes it's causes because of adenocortic cortisol, SCTS excess, mood switching, high blood pressure, buffalo harm, easily bruising, metabolic alkalosis, easily pathological fracture develop, weight gain, moon phase. Here everything is go down, but pushing. Most of them are up. Like blood sugar go up, red blood cell go up, sodium level go up, right? In case of men, develop gynecomastia. Also, facial hair in women we call hirsutism, pushing. So, what is decrease hair, increase pushing. In Cushing, what is decrease, WBC decrease, so infection easily catch up. Potassium will go down, magnesium go down. But here you can see Addison, potassium go up, magnesium go up, right? Calcium go up. So what are the treatment options for Addison and Cushing? So give them quite environment, increase sodium in the diet because sodium level go down, sodium go down, decrease potassium in the diet because potassium level go up. It is important daily measurement of body weight. So if Edison disease is not under control, patient develop some crisis and this is called sign of Addisonian crisis, like patient has a severe hypotension, which is lead to shock, weakness, vasomotor collapse, which may lead to the death. So treatment is important, right? So treatment with bed rest, IV cortisone, because everything is go down in Addison. So treat the patient to carry injectable corticone at all the times and wear the medical bracelet. Where is the cushing? We, it is good to provide comfortness, decrease sodium in diet, increase potassium in diet, monitor the glucose, observe the mold change, intake and output, increase protein, decrease calories, and patient may need surgical management. Next questions about here. A client is admitted with inflammatory bowel syndrome, particularly Crohn's disease. So Crohn's disease also known as regional enteritis or ileitis. So which therapy should the nurse expect to the part of the care plan? 
select all the deadline. Lactose therapy, high fiber diet, high protein milkshake, corticosteroid therapy, and antidiarrheal medications. So our patient have a Crohn's disease. Patient most of the time is present with abdominal pain, feeling of feel full abdomen, tiredness, diarrhea, and constipation. So rational said corticosteroids such as prednisone reduce the sign and symptoms of diarrhea, pain, and breathing by decreasing inflammation. Antidiarrheal such as uh, Lomotril or other diarrhea increased by peristalsis. Lactulose is used to treat the chronic constipations and would aggravate the symptoms. A high fiber diet and milk or milk product are contraindicated in the client with a Crohn's disease because they may promote the diarrhea. So in this picture, we can see a few more information and compare contrast with other GI diseases like ulcerative colitis. It is the effect the left for descending colon. Patient present with severe diarrhea, 15 to 20 stool per day. It is bloody with mucus. Predisposing to the um, colon cancer. So if anybody's ulcerative colitis, if not treated, chance to develop the colon cancer. Disorder is common 15 to 40 years old, particularly Jewish female. So if your patient has ulcerative colitis, important to educate them to avoid carbonated beverages, low residual diet, low fat. It is good to use low fat high protein diet, right? What else? The Crohn's disease, that is the question come, or regional enteritis, affect the ilia and right side and decreasing the colon and or descending colon. It is the left side, right side. Three to four semi-solid stool per day. Disorder is common, 20 to 60 years old and both sex. Important to educate, eat a high calorie, high protein, high carbohydrate. Also high uh, vitamin important, milk free diet or low fat. Possible treatment for ulcerative colitis and regional enteritis is So colostomy or ileostomy, also oral or rectal medication like anti-inflammatory drugs, steroid, particular prednisone can help, immune sup uh, suppressor like 6 marcapurin, antibiotics, amy, um, ampicillin, cephalosporin, or antifungal. Antidiarrheal like loperamide or codeine can work. Can work. Next question here about sickle cell crisis. So a nurse is caring for a child in acute sickle cell crisis. Which laboratory below does the nurse expect to see? Select all the apply. Sickle cell crisis patient must have a sickle cell anemia. 
and sickle cell anemia or sickle cell crisis develop the patient who has a sickle cell disease or sickle cell disease is inherited blood disorder where the red blood cell become sickling right it causes the treatment infections swelling in the uh, hands and legs pain severe tiredness and also delay the growth in puberty so who have a sickle cell crisis what are the expect to see low mean corpuscular hemoglobin mch or mcv high mean corpuscular volume positive met uh, metabisulfite test negative uh, jelly bodies and positive hemoglobin test so i answer said low mch positive metabisulfite test and positive hemoglobin s one type of hemoglobin rational says sickle cell crisis typically present with a low mch and positive metabisulfite test mcb will be low in sickle cell anemia also right presence of hemoglobin S is a definitive indicator of sickle cell anemia or sickle cell disease. So if patients have a uh, sickle cell disease, they complain of pain, uh, first priority, hydrate, hydrated the patient. Next question here, about the spinal cord injuries. So during morning care, the nurse noted that this client who had a spinal cord injury is experiencing a change in the level of consciousness and is not answering questions appropriately. The nurse checks the client's vital signs and measure his blood pressure at 110 over 180 over 110 millimeter of mercury and he is heart rate 125 beat per minute and she determined that the client may be experiencing dysreflexia so what other assessment should the nurse make and select all that apply so spinal cord injury, this question come. So number one, most recent bowel movement, urine output, percentage of meal taken, and also medication order for hypertension and pain level. So select all answer is most recent bowel movement, urine output, Number five, pain level. This is a correct answer. Rational said the objectives in treating a client with dysreflexia is to remove and trigger events and prevent the complications. Common cause are distended bladder, constipations, or impacting skin stimulations and pain. Percentage of meals take is not priorities of assessment. Medication order for hypertension are a less priority than the making assessment to identify the cause. So in this picture, showing the fracture vertebral body and causes pressure on the nerves injured the spinal cord. So if patient has a spinal cord injury, physically damaged to the spinal cord, or you see the falling and neck prefecture, road traffic accident. 
So spinal cord, which is interfered with the normal motor, sensory, or autonomic functions. So patients who have spinal cord injury, they usually present with problem to walking, weakness, loss of bladder function, feeling of uh, spreading unconsciousness or headache, difficult of breathing, back pain, also pain or stiffness in the neck. So it is very important nursing care, right? So spinal cord injury patient paralysis below the level of injuries. If injury up cervical four, paralysis of respiratory muscle and all four extremities, we call quadriplasia. Also, had the injuries created the loss of functions. Temperature regulation problems decrease the level of injuries. So, nursing intervention is important here. So, this is the objectives in the treating a client with the dysplexia is, a, is to remove triggered events and prevent complications. Common cause are distended bladder, constipations, or impacting the skin stimulations and pain. Percentage of males taken is not priority assessment. Medication order for hypertension are of lesser priorities than making assessment to identify the cause. So nursing diagnosis. Always, if patient has a spinal cord injury, we always ineffective airway clearance related to the paralysis of respiratory or chest and abdominal muscle. We have to check it. So ineffective the breathing pattern related to the paralysis of respiratory, chest, and abdominal muscle. We need to check. Next question here about the skin grafting. So, a client returns from operation room with a partial thickness skin graft on his left arm. The donut tissue was taken from his left hip. In planning his immediate post-operative care, which intervention should the nurse include? Select all the reply. Change the dressing on the graft side every eight hour. Evaluate the left arm, provide complete rest of the grafted area. Ad administer pain medications every four hour as order for pain in all donor site. Number four, perform range of motion exercise to the left arm every four hour. Monitor the pulse in the left arm every four hours, encouraging the client to ambulate as desired desire on the first post operative dates. So, the correct answer number two, alleviate the left arm and provide complete rest of the grafted area. Number three, administer pain medications every four hours is order. For pain in donor side. Number five, monitor the pulse in left arm every four hours. So skin grafting. So it is the surgical transplant of the skin from one body part to the other. Usually donor to conceal heavy scar from injury because of burn or other medical conditions. So you can see here, the grafted skin is replaced and after this healing is here. So the left arm should be elevated to reduce the edema. 
and also complete the rest of the arm is needed to allow the graft to adhere. The donor side is usually more painful than the graft side. And the client will require the pain medication to obtain the relief. Because of adequate circulation is needed for the graft healing. And it is important to monitor the pulse pressure and also change the dressing every eight hour for performing the range of motion exercise and also ambulating are inappropriate. Why? Because post-operative graft sites require immobilization for three to five days. So number four or number one is not an answer. <laughs>